Welcome back. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Well, particularly to our American subscribers, yes. it's Thanksgiving. Canada, it's already happened. But yeah, they had theirs a while ago. <laughs> happy Thanksgiving to you guys out there. Hope yes. you're ha going to have a great day today and enjoy a lot of time and be thankful. That's the whole point of it for things that we have in life and, yeah. and uh, express some gratitude. That's what I always try to do anyways. And so we've got a request for Thanksgiving. We do. Um, from one of our subscribers, Mark, who has supported the channel tremendously. He really yes. wanted us to check this out on Thanksgiving and yep. get it posted for Thanksgiving. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, that's why we arrived at Alice's Restaurant. Yeah, I have never heard of this. So it should no be interesting. No idea. Arlo Guthrie. No idea who this is. No. Apparently, he's a legend uh, in his own right, but we don't have much of a backstory. We're just getting into Bob Dylan, and he came before Bob Dylan. So we got a ways to go in that front. But apparently, this is loosely based around Thanksgiving. Giving, but it's more of a comedic song that is clearly very long in 18 yeah, minutes. Yeah, got some satire in it. Yeah, so uh, other than that, we don't know much other than what Mark has told us in that this is something that's near and dear to people of his generation's hearts, and he thought that you guys would really appreciate us checking this out. Yes. So that's why we arrived here, uh, but other than that, we don't have much to add. Are you ready to get going, Sam? I am. Let's do it. All right, let's go. This song is called Alice's Restaurant. It's about Alice and the restaurant. But Alice's Restaurant is not the name of the restaurant. That's just the name of the song. And that's why I call the song Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Now it all started two Thanksgivings ago, it was on two years ago on Thanksgiving when my friend and I went up to visit Alice at the restaurant, but Alice doesn't live in the restaurant, she lives in the church nearby the restaurant in the bell tower with her husband Ray and Fotch is a dog, and living in the bell tower like that, they got a lot of room downstairs where the pews used to be, and Having all that room, seeing as how they took out all the pews, they decided that they didn't have to take out their garbage for a long time. We got up there, we found all the garbage in there, and we decided it'd be a friendly gesture for us to take the garbage down to the city dump. So we took the half a ton of garbage, put it in the back of a red VW microbus, took shovels and rakes and implements of destruction, and headed on toward the city dump. Well, we got there, and there's a big sign and a chain across the dump saying closed on Thanksgiving. And we had never heard of a dump closed on Thanksgiving before. And with tears in our eyes, we drove off into the sunset looking for another place to put the garbage. We didn't find one. Till we came to a side road, and off the side of the side road was another 15-foot cliff. And at the bottom of the cliff was another pile of garbage. And we decided that one big pile is better than two little piles, and rather than bring that one up, we decided to throw ours down. That's what we did. Drove back to the church, had a Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat, went to sleep and didn't get up until the next morning when we got a phone call from Officer Obi. Officer Obi. He said, kid, we found your name on an envelope at the bottom of a half a ton of garbage, and wanted to know if you had any information about it and I said yes sir officer Obe cannot tell a lie I put that envelope under that garbage <laughs> after speaking over for about 45 minutes on the telephone we finally arrived at the truth of the matter and said 
that we had to go down and pick up the garbage and also had to go down and speak to him at the police officer station. So we got in the red VW microbus with the shovels and rakes and implements of destruction headed on toward the police officer station. Now friends, there was only one or two things that Obi could have done at the police station and the first was that he could have given us a medal for being so brave and honest on the telephone, which wasn't very likely and we didn't expect it. Another thing was that he could have bawled us out and told us never to be seen driving garbage around the vicinity again which is what we expected but when we got to the police officer so i in my opinion i i would not classify this as a song so it's more of like a story with music in the background well, yeah i mean it is a story to me with like just a backdrop yeah I mean, maybe he gets into singing or something at some yeah. point but so far i feel like he's just kind of telling a story with a little bit of inflections in his voice and some guitar in the background yeah yeah that's what my vibe would be yeah you agree yeah yeah i'm just so like focused on like what's happening <laughs> this station there was a third possibility that we hadn't even counted upon and we was both immediately arrested handcuffed and i said oh yeah don't think i can pick up the garbage with these handcuffs on he said shut up kid Get in the back of the patrol car, and that's what we did. Sat in the back of the patrol car and drove to the, quote, scene of the crime, unquote. I want to tell you about the town of Stockbridge, Massachusetts, where this happened here. They got three stop signs, two police officers, and one police car. But when we got to the scene of the crime, there was five police officers and three police cars being the biggest crime of the last 50 years, and everybody wanted to get in the newspaper <laughs> story about it. And they was using up all kinds of cop equipment that they had hanging around the police officer station. They was taking plaster, tire track, footprints, dog smelling prints. And they took 27 8 by 10 color glossy photographs with circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. Took pictures of the approach, the getaway, the northwest corner and southwest corner and that's not to mention the aerial photography. After the ordeal, we went back to the jail. Obi said he was going to put us in the cell. Said, kid, I'm going to put you in the cell. I want your wallet and your belt. And I said, Obi, I can understand you wanting my wallet so I don't have any money to spend in the cell, but what do you want my <laughs> belt for? And it said, kid, we don't want any hangings. Said, Obi, did you think I was going to hang myself for littering? <laughs> Obi said he was making sure, and friends Obi was, because he took out the toilet seat so I couldn't hit myself over the head and drown. And he took out the toilet paper so I couldn't bend the bars, roll out the roll the toilet paper out the window, slide down the roll, and have an escape. <laughs> Obi was making sure, and it was about four or five hours Plus. later that Alice, remember Alice? It's a song about Alice. Alice came by and with a few nasty words to Obi on the side, bailed us out of jail. We went back to the church, had another Thanksgiving dinner that couldn't be beat and didn't get up until the next morning when we all had to go to court. We walked in, sat down. Obi came in with a 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back each one. Sat down man came in said all rise we all stood up and obi stood up with the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures and the judge walked in sat down with the cni dog and he sat down we sat down obi looked at the cni dog and then the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one and looked at the cni dog <laughs> And then the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one and began to cry because Obi came to the realization that it was a typical case of American blind justice and there wasn't nothing he could do about it. And the judge wasn't going to look at the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one explaining what each one was to be used as evidence against us. And we was fined fifty dollars and had to pick up the garbage in the snow, but that's not what I came to tell you about. <laughs> <laughs> we 
we, we just started, it was just uh, all about littering and <laughs> this yeah. garbage that they would pick up from this place. And yeah, and this guy using them as this exciting activity because nothing bad ever happens. So trying to get all this fame in the newspapers from their crime. Yeah, and then now it's become into this giant you know, part of the story that now they're in the courthouse. and yeah, uh, the blind judge. I can't remember what... Uh, what the title was, but we did that Three Stooges. It's like something in the courthouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like drama in the court or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I, I remember what one you're talking about. But this is what it's giving me flashbacks to of just seeing that. That's what I'm picturing. Yeah, like all this ruckus going on in the courtroom. Yeah, but it just, you know, he, he kind of made a joke there that we're eight minutes into this yeah. now. And he's like gone on and rambled on yeah, about this whole like, thing. Yeah, and like, this isn't even what the story is about. this isn't even what I need to tell you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's about Alice. <laughs> Came to talk about the draft. We got a building down in New York City. It's called Whitehall Street. Where I was just going to say, I was laugh I thought about it after that. I was laughing because, you know, we often talk about people who don't get to the point of stories. You know, you'll tell the story and tell the preface of the story and then more about the story. And then the answer is always like, okay, but like, what's the point of the story? <laughs> right? Like, I want to know the end of the story. So this kind of reminds me a little bit of that, too. You talk about people? Yeah. What kind of people? <laughs> And Patrice O'Neill would say all females. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I, I thought you were kind of skirting down around the main part of the point there of who exactly we're referring to. Phil says I do that sometimes. Some How cases, rude, we right? Might be referring to Sam. Anyways, let's keep going. <laughs> you got a building down in New York City. It's called Whitehall Street, where you walk in and you get injected, inspected, detected, infected, neglected, and selected. I went down to get my physical examination one day and I walked in and sat down. Got good and drunk the night before, so I looked and felt my best when I went in that morning. Cause I wanted to look like the all-American kid from New York City. Man, I wanted, I wanted to feel like the all I wanted to be the all-American kid from New York. And I walked in, sat down, I was hung down, brung down, hung up and all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things. And I walked in, I sat down, they gave me a piece of paper, said, kid, see the psychiatrist, room 604. And I went up there, I said, shrink, I want to kill. I mean, I want, I want to kill, kill. I want, I want to see, I want to see blood and gore and guts and veins in my teeth. Eat dead, burnt bodies. I mean, kill. Kill, kill, kill! And I started jumping up and down, yelling, kill, kill! And it started jumping up and down with me, and we was both jumping up and down, yelling, kill, kill! And the sergeant came over, pinned the metal on the set me down the hall, said, you're our boy. And you feel too good about it. Proceeded on down the hall, getting more injections, inspections, detections, neglections, and all the kinds of stuff that they was doing to me at the thing there. And I was there for two hours, three hours, four hours. I was there for a long time, going through all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly things, and I was just having a tough time there. And they was inspecting, injecting every single part of me, and they wasn't leaving no part untouched. Proceeded through, and I when I finally came to see the very last man, I walked in, walked in, sat down after a whole big thing there, and I walked up and said, what do you want? He said, kid, we only got one question. Have you ever been arrested? <laughs> and I proceeded to tell him the story of Alice's Restaurant, Massacre, with full orchestration and five-part harmony and stuff like that, and then all the phenomena stopped me right there and said, kid, did you ever go to court? I proceeded to tell them the story of the 27 8 by 10 colored glossy pictures with the circles and arrows and a paragraph on the back of each one that stopped me right there and said, Kid, I want you to go over and sit down on that bench that says Group W. Now, kid! And I, I walked over to, to the bench there, and there's, there's Group W is where they, where they put you if you may not be moral enough to, to join the army after committing your special crime. And 
There was all kinds of mean, nasty, ugly looking people on the bench there. As mother rapers, father stabbers, father rapers, father rapers sitting right there on the bench next to me. And one, they was mean and nasty and ugly and horrible and crime fighting guys are sitting there on the bench. And the meanest, ugliest, nastiest one, the meanest father raper of them all, was coming over to me. And he was mean and ugly and nasty and horrible and all kinds of things. And he sat down next to me and said, Kid, what'd you get? I said, I didn't get nothing. I had to pay $50 and pick up the garbage. <laughs> I said, What were you arrested for, kid? And I said, Littering. And they all moved away from me on the bench there to carry a bone, all kinds of mean, nasty things, till I said, and creating a nuisance. And they all came back, shook my hand, and we had a great time on the bench talking about crime, mother stabbing, father raping, all kinds of groovy things that we was talking about on the bench. And everything was fine, we were smoking cigarettes and all kinds of things until the sergeant came over, had some paper in his hand, held it up, and said, kids, this piece of paper's got 47 words, 37 cents, it's 58 words. We want no details of crime, time, crime, and that kind of thing. You gotta say, turn to the about the crime, one know the rest of the officer's name, and that kind of thing. You gotta say, and talk for 45 minutes, and nobody understood a word that he said. But we had fun filling out the forms and playing with the pencils on the bench there. And I filled out the massacre with the forms. This is uh, something I've never heard before. This is like literally one of a kind. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think uh, Mark had mentioned something about the Vietnam War. So I guess that's what they're referencing in this song. Yeah. Like uh, getting ready to go to the yeah, war. Yeah. That he wasn't eligible to go to Vietnam yeah. because he got in trouble. For littering. With, for <laughs> littering. And that's what all that was referring to. And, yeah. In the uh, selection process, in the inspection process, yeah. in the knee flexion process. <laughs> and uh, his descriptions are very unique alongside with his, like, accent that he has. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's it's just so different than what I'm, ex- I'm oh, used to. Oh, me too, to. yeah. But yeah. I'm just so engaged in the story. Like, it's it's a lot of, like, almost, like, taking you down wild goose chases. Yes. But I'm, like, that's why I it's still want to know the very end of what's going to happen. But I think that's the point, right? There is, like, I mean, I guess maybe we'll get to the end. But I think that's the whole point of the way he's put this together. Yeah. Is, like, he just constantly keeps taking you down all these <laughs> random paths. Yeah. And you're, like, well, like, what? Are we, why are we going down this way? What's going on here? What happened in this? You know, and that's yeah. why it's so, like, an 18-minute song. Yeah, because yeah. Because he keeps leading you down, like you said, the wild goose chases, yeah. right? Four-part harmony and wrote it down there just like it was. And everything was fine. And I put down a pencil and I turned over the piece of paper and... And there, there on the other side, in the middle of the other side, away from everything else on the other side, in parentheses, (laughs) capital letters, quotated, Read the following words. Kid, you rehabilitated yourself. I went over to the sergeant and said, Sergeant, you've got a lot of damn gall to ask me if I've rehabilitated myself. I mean, I mean, I mean, I just, I'm sitting here on a bench. I mean, I'm sitting here on a group W bench. Cause you want to know if I'm moral enough to join an army, burn women, kids, houses, and villages <laughs> after being a litter bug. He looked at me and said, kid, you don't like your kind. And we're going to send your fingerprints off to Washington and friends. Somewhere in Washington, enshrined in some little folders, a study in black and white of my fingerprints. And the only reason I'm singing you the song now is because you may know somebody in a similar situation. 
or you may be in a similar situation and if you're in a situation like that there's only one thing you can do is walk into the shrink wherever you are just walk in say shrink I wanna kill you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant and walk out you know, if one person, just one person does it, they may think he's really sick and they won't take him. And if two people, two people do it in harmony, they may think they're both faggots and they won't take either of them. <laughs> and if three people do it... Did you catch that? Yeah, the two people. Yeah. They'll think they're like they're gay yeah Yeah. okay i just didn't know if you heard it yeah yeah they think they're both faggots and they won't take either of them (laughs) and if three people do it three can you imagine three people walking in singing a bar alice's restaurant and walking out they may think it's an organization and can you can you imagine 50 people a day? I said 50 people a day walking in, singing a bar, Alice's restaurant, walking out. And friends, they may think it's a movement. And that's what it is. The Alice's restaurant anti-massacre movement. And all you gotta do to join is to sing it the next time it comes around on the guitar. With feeling. With feeling. So we'll wait till it comes around on the guitar here. Sing it when you're done. Here it comes. You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. You can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant. Walk right in, it's around the back. Just a half a mile from the railroad track. You can get anything you want at Alice's Restaurant. That was horrible. If you want to end war and stuff, you gotta sing loud. You could put a lot. I've been singing the song now for 25 minutes. I could sing it for another 25 minutes. I'm not proud. Or tired. So we'll wait till it comes around again. And this time with four part harmony and feeling. We're just waiting for it to come around, is what we're doing. All right now. You can get anything you want. At Alice's restaurant, accepting Alice, you can get anything you want. At Alice's restaurant, say so walk right in, it's around the back, just a half a mile from the railroad track. And you can get anything you want. At Alice's restaurant, da 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 da. At Alice's restaurant. get anything you want at alice's restaurant just not a trip to vietnam <laughs> yeah <laughs> Crazy. if that was in fact what it was about yeah i'd be um, curious to know if this is like a true story or not <laughs> i think it is actually based loosely around a true story interesting um mm. which kind of seems so far-fetched to me that it's not possible yeah It was so random. Like, how would it be possible? Yeah, it's crazy. It also, though, like, I mean, this is, like, kind of detached, but it just reminds me of how, like, you know, he kind of made light of the fact that, like, he did this one thing that was, like, not that serious, and it kind of, you know, shows up later in ways that are going to stop opportunities, not that you want to go to war, but it's like, you know. definitely wouldn't call it an opportunity. No, but I'm just saying, like, I feel like in this day and age, right, there's there's things that people have, you know, maybe gotten into trouble with a little bit with the law that maybe not weren't something, you know, wrong place, wrong time, or just not something that was huge, but it does come back to, like, haunt you your whole life, right, per se, so. Yeah, I mean, but I think uh, that's accurate for sure, but I think with this, you know, it's more, 
I was looking at it as he was poking fun at the morality right? he oh, 100%. mentioned of that of, you know, you guys say, uh, you know, I'm this terrible guy and I can't go to Vietnam because of that or I can't join the army in particular because yeah. of that. And, you know, you guys are out here going to be shooting and killing everybody oh, 100%. left, right and center. But uh, littering is clearly, you know. Yeah. And, and so just having the, the idea that you need to have morals to go to war seems like an oxymoron yes, in itself. Yes, right? 100%. Because what and, you're going to do is not moral. Yeah, exactly. So I think that was the point of the song in general was, you know, what's the point of what's going on, right? Yeah. And yeah, literally. Anyway, so that was a very unique, very, very uh, unique experience. I've never had a song that was more of a story uh, you know the one only part of the that i would classify as a song was the chorus alice's restaurant portion, yeah right? and like the background instrumental stuff yeah but i mean he's just basically talking over it uh, as a story it wasn't even like a poem i would say it was just more of a story yeah right? it's like talking so anyway, anyways thank you for that recommendation mark i hope you enjoyed recollecting on your past and yeah. hopefully some of you other subscribers enjoyed this one as well if you did make sure you hit the like button for us we appreciate that leave us a comment let us know if you guys recall any times that you were listening to this if it's a yeah. thanksgiving tradition any of that stuff we always like to hear all the comments from you guys so let mm -hmm. us know and uh, hopefully you're having a great thanksgiving like i said at the beginning of the video hopefully this yes. added to it if it did um, make sure that you subscribe if you haven't done so already and uh, hopefully we see you in our next video happy thanksgiving guys happy thanksgiving and thanks so much for watching